Welcome to all of you here and all of you joining online this morning. Today is Quilt Sunday. So at the end of the service, we will hand out the quilts that were nicely assembled by our quilting group. And um, we will send all the graduates off with a song. So be prepared for that. If you have not yet pledged, please take a moment to do so. We are really excited about the pledge response so far, and um, we know that with everyone leaning in, amazing thing, things can happen next year. Please know that every pledge counts and is considered as we're making decisions about next year's budget. You can pledge this morning by using the pew cards in the pew back in front of you, or using the QR code on the back of your bulletin. If you look at the prayer requests in your inside back cover, which would be page 14, you see that for today we have quite a few. So we have Dave Vaughn, we have um, the prayer request for the LWF, the Lutheran World Federation, and their humanitarian work in Ukraine and in the Middle East. And we also pray for um, Bente Larsen, who got married past Friday. And then um, Ryan Grossweiler, who is the brother-in-law of Marielle Spengler at the death of his mother, Karen, past week. But we also have a lot to celebrate. Our seniors, Rebecca, Anna, Dexton, Grant, Caroline, Julian, Maddie, Ty, and also Elizabeth. And we will pray for all of them today, but please keep them also in your prayers throughout the weeks and months coming. Please stand as you're able. One more now. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good morning. I have a youth with me who is going to make an announcement. Um, 
Hi, I'm Annika. I'm one of the youth going on the, um, the uh, trip to the 2024 uh, ELCA uh, youth gathering in New Orleans this summer. And I'd just like to say we, haven't, we still haven't sold all of our envelopes to help us um, fundraise for the trip. So any um, envelope buying you can do after the service would be appreciated. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and they're all back on the glass there. So make sure you check that out before you leave today. Thank you so much. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, through our time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power restore us to holiness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. You may be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose sight had begun to grow dim so they, that he could not see, was lying down in his room. 
the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Word of God, word of life. before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. A reading from 2 Corinthians. 
We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may, may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Word of God, word of life. able for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way with his disciples, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God, where Abiathar was high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again. He entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'd like to invite the children to come down. Goodness. All right, I have a question for you. When you wake up in the morning, do you stretch? Do you ever do a big wake up stretch? Like, oh, I'm awake. Do you ever do that? No? <laughs> you stretch before you go to sleep. How do you stretch before you go to sleep? Um, well, I just make sure that I'm going stretched out that way. Very good. Do you ever stretch at school where you touch your toes? Can you touch your toes? Do we try? Can you do it? Ooh, can you touch your toes? <laughs> oh, you got to take your shoes off. There you go. Touch your toes. Oh, good job. Yeah. Well, so with stretching, the more you do it, the better you get at it, right? Yeah. The more you stretch, the, the more flexible you get. You could probably touch all the way to your toes if you stretch really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you could do the splits, too. <laughs> That's amazing. 
But you have to work on that, right? You have to stretch every day to be better and better at it. And it can be challenging to stretch. I bet some people here have a challenge to stretch like that, right? <laughs> Um, and it can be sometimes tricky, and so we have to practice stretching. And just like we practice stretching with our mind, like we practice in school, and we practice our math, and we practice our science so that we can get better at it. Well, Jesus met a man whose hand couldn't stretch. His hand was like this, and Jesus said, stretch your hand out to me. And the man said, Jesus, I can't. I can't stretch my hand. And Jesus healed him, and he was able to stretch his hand out. And sometimes we have to stretch in ways that are challenging for us. Like Jesus said, love everybody. And is that easy to do? Sometimes. But sometimes somebody might be really mean to us, and it's kind of hard to love them, right? And that's challenging. But if we practice doing those challenging things, like maybe that's stretching for us, or maybe that's math for us, or maybe that's loving everybody for us, then the more we practice it, the better we get at it. And Jesus is reminding us that it's important to practice listening to Jesus. It's important to practice loving people. And it's important to challenge ourselves and stretch ourselves so that we can do better and we can love better in this world. And so that's our lesson for today, that we remember that it's okay to challenge ourselves and stretch ourselves, even if it's wake up in the morning and stretch, right? Because the more we do it, the more stretchy we'll get, and the more we'll be able to love people. Let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for teaching us and challenging us and stretching us in ways that we might love all of your creation more. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. So we're just kind of right on the tipping point of summer here. Quilt Sunday, we're kind of finishing up the year, but as the church year goes, we're also tipping into a new time of the year as well. I wouldn't say a season. If you see us up front in green, we're by definition not in a season. We're just kind of floating around loose between seasons. When we move into this time of year, though, we're starting an entire second half of the story of this year. So the story of the year begins around the time of Thanksgiving. We celebrate and observe the season of Advent. We get to Christmas. We get to Epiphany. We move to Ash Wednesday and Lent and Holy Week and Easter and a week of weeks celebrating Easter. And then as we move past Easter, this whole first part of the year, the story of the life of Jesus and Jesus' earthly ministry, his birth, his crucifixion, all of these steps we move through. And now we shift gears into a different time of year. The second half of the year is not about Jesus, it's about us. But it can be a little confusing because every, every Sunday we'll still tell stories about Jesus. So, it's not always obvious, but it's the time of year that is about us. It's the time of year where Jesus is telling us how we should be living this life. Or maybe a different way of saying it, it's the time of year where we walk out to the car after the service going, I don't know about that Jesus guy. He's got a lot to say about what I'm supposed to be about, and I'm not totally sure I'm totally on board. We're in that part of the year. And certainly today's reading is kind of a piece of that story. In today's story, we hear a lot about the Sabbath. And there will be a lot of sermons preached today about this idea of rest, of recreation, recreate, recreation. This idea of renewing ourselves, but at the same time, we're going to see in the text today that there are some different ways in which this moves. I think it could be argued, I've read a lot recently about community and individuals, 
our society in a lot of ways is kind of at the pendulum end of the individual focus in regards to society. If we move to the other end towards community, that's a different focus. Both ends have amazing blessings and both ends have challenges at times. And throughout the centuries, human society kind of slowly moves from one end to the other, and we are definitely towards an end, uh, a piece of focus on individual. And when we think of Sabbath, then, we might think of it individually. Did I get time away? Did I get this, that, or the other? This idea of a time of rest, and that's important. But the history of Sabbath is something that is often understood to be observed in community. It's a time in which we gather. I would guess for many of you, this is probably the largest grouping of people you will be around this week. And this is a common piece of the way in which we observe Sabbath. We begin by gathering for worship. Now certainly if we go back to the Old Testament texts, if we think of the Jewish people in particular, the idea of the observance of Sabbath has different connotations, but has been an important part of their identity as a people. It's an important part of who they are. But the funny thing about today's reading from the Gospel is that this isn't some story about the disciples being overworked and tired, and Jesus comes and says, hey guys, I really think we need to take a day off and take a break. That, that's not the story that we have today. In fact, the second part of the Gospel text, in many ways, is calling us to make a list of the reasons why we might not observe Sabbath time. It's kind of a curious set of readings there. Jesus and his disciples had been moving through this field. They were hungry. They were taking grain from the stalks. They were eating it. They weren't supposed to be doing that on the Sabbath. It was something that they were to abstain from work, and there they were working by harvesting this grain, even in small pieces like this. Now, this idea of work on the Sabbath is something that the religious leaders of Jesus' day paid very close attention to in the hopes of tripping him up in some fashion. So in the second half of the story, we see that Jesus shows up at the synagogue, and there is this, this action-packed piece where you can picture in the back, there are all these Pharisees with like clipboards and they've got their cell phones out ready to record Jesus so that they can take it back to the leadership and say, aha, we caught him red-handed helping people. This guy's got to be stopped. Helping people on the Sabbath. Helping this man who had a withered hand. Now, there's a lot of things that are interesting in this story. For one... Jesus shows a lot of emotion. It's translated as him being angry, but an argument could be made to say that he was enraged. Enraged. We get a bit uncomfortable when Jesus starts showing a lot of emotion. We can think of the scene where Jesus wept at the death of his beloved friend, Lazarus. Or we can think of that time when he was in the temple and he made a whip and drove people out, kicking tables over. We kind of like Jesus when he's calmer, right? Usually our image is he's kind of just slightly out of focus. He's got a bizarrely white robe for the first century, surely not possible. A kind of a blue sash and really great hair, and he walks around kind of slowly and is always there lambs everywhere he goes, right, is kind of the picture we have. And this idea of rage as a part of what's happening, 
What is that rage about? The hurt and pain of this man and Jesus knowing that he is in a position to do something about it, except for that it's the Sabbath. Now we could say that Jesus was stuck, right? Shoot, I, I'd help you, but it's the Sabbath. I mean, we're, we're kind of trapped, right? He could have responded that way. The text talking about a withered hand would suggest that that wasn't a condition that man had woken up with that day. Likely, he had had a withered hand for quite some time, had learned to live with it, such that Jesus might have approached him, you know, maybe during the sharing of the peace and said, hey, you know, meet me after the service at Pete's and I'll sort this out for you. Or, hey, we're leaving town tomorrow. How about we meet just outside of town before I head out? I'll wait for you there and I'll heal your hand then. Seems reasonable work around. Except Jesus, seeing all the clipboards and the phones out in the back, says, is everyone watching? I'm about to heal this man on the Sabbath. He was not subtle about it. Kind of makes you wonder if he would have done it if there weren't people watching, right? This sense of being angry about the brokenness of this world, and particularly for those who are vulnerable or who may be on the margins, or whatever the case might be. And what's interesting is how angry they get afterwards. That's it. He helped this guy on the Sabbath. Something has got to be done. Now, in our world, just like in any point in history, there are certain groups that are vulnerable and hurting and in pain in our world, and we wrestle with how to help. And is it the right time or is it not? How does this work? I was reading an article this last week about Catholic charities in San Diego who assist with those who are in the country illegally and new. And one of the things that they're wrestling with right now is threats coming to staff and others working in that ministry. Or we think of this month as Pride Month and all of the FBI warnings that come with that for people's safety all kinds of situations. But one of the things that I notice when Jesus says, we're gonna heal this guy right now, Jesus is giving us a model for how we are to move through this life. So I told you at the beginning, this half of the year is about how we are called to live, right? Jesus is going to heal this man and every one of us in our own brokenness struggles because we want to put footnotes to this. Oh, that guy? Oh, you want to heal that guy? Ah, uh, not, not that guy. We want footnotes, right? We want to make sure that we're not accidentally in a position where we might help somebody who shouldn't have been helped, right? And each and every one of us, myself included, there's maybe a different list of people that is our list of folks who shouldn't be helped because of X, Y, or Z. But you know, Jesus, I think, would speak to us and say, I, it's pretty simple. I didn't ask you to put footnotes. It just really is help, help. And I would suggest that in every kind of faith community, every different kind of thought persuasion, whatever the case is, we all have lists of folks that we just don't want to help. And I think Jesus is saying in this text about the Sabbath, there are people who need help before you're concerned about whether they're worthy about it or not. There are people that need your assistance 
regardless of whether you thought they could do more to help themselves first. And in the midst of that, we should make every effort to start our Sabbath together, dusting ourselves off to continue that helping work, to be fed in the meal at the altar, that we might go out with good courage and take the risk that we might help someone who maybe didn't deserve it. Is that not the risk that Jesus calls us to be about in this life? Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. For your faithful people to be attentive to the spiritual, physical, and societal weariness of our neighbors, that we proclaim your grace through tangible acts of mercy and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For relief to areas facing flooding or drought, and bring favorable weather for the flourishing of crops, gardens, and orchards. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the Lutheran World Federation and their humanitarian work around the world, especially in Ukraine and the Middle East. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all graduates of high school and college, especially Rebecca, Anna, Daxton, Grant, Carolyn, Julian, Maddie, Ty, and Elizabeth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For wholeness and respite to all who are weary, those who struggle in any way, and those who care for them. Be with the Grossweiler family as they grieve. Be close to all those we name in our hearts or out loud now. Merciful God, for love between humans, we give thanks, especially for the love between Benta and Dan on the occasion of their wedding, for those gathering to celebrate pride this month, and for the way your love spills into our lives in joyous ways. Merciful God, for the communion of saints whose lives made visible the saving life of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks especially for Karen. Guide us by their example to embody the treasure of your love for the sake of our world until we come to our final rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that piece. celebrate and uh, we also celebrate birthdays today. Where's Gretchen? She was just here. She was right here. Did she disappear? She disappeared. I don't know. <laughs> there she is. And it's also Yvonne's birthday. So I'd say as she enters. <laughs> Happy birthday.
At this point, we will receive the offering again on the back of your bulletin, the QR code with Grace Connect. Just a couple of things. We have a men's dinner coming up at, at our home, the Parsonage, on the 15th, Saturday the 15th. We'd love to get a head count, so that's a, a link you can find through there. And um, giving, pledging can be done through there as well, or there are cards in the pew back in front of you. Stand as you're able.
incarnation, through your Holy Spirit, make the crucified and risen Lord present to us. Make us holy through him, that we might behold your glory. By that same Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Liberating God, visit your children who are enslaved by the harshness of others. Unshackle any who live under the shadow of oppression and let them go. Until the day you bring us into your one eternal presence, transforming every sorrow and sin and suffering in the fullness of your glory beyond all measure. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. and I invite the communion assistants to come forward. As you come forward to receive communion, please take a glass from the tray on the front pew. You will then receive the bread. We also have gluten-free bread. The first assistant on either side have wine. The second have grape juice. You can return your glasses at the corner. If you want to receive a blessing, please come forward with your arms crossed. All is ready. All are welcome. Mm.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is also the first Sunday of the month, and so we deliver communion to those who are at home. Today, Sabina will do that. Please join me in a prayer. O oh God of tender compassion, as you heal the sick and welcome the stranger, bless those who leave this assembly to share the gifts of this table with our sisters and brothers who are at home. May they be sustained by the love and prayers of this community and by the bread of the life that satisfies all hunger. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Um, now is the time when we honor our high school seniors um, for all that they've accomplished and all that they have ways that they've grown in the years that we've seen them at Grace grow up. Um, and so I'd like to take a minute to invite our seniors up. Um, we've got Ty Cutler, Julianne Dietering, Rebecca Derrick, Grant Morganfield, come on up. Daxton couldn't be here today, he's sick. Anna Roden, Maddie Schumann, Caroline Stone, and then me, but I'm not there. <laughs> um, yeah, and in Hawaii, come on over. It's a, it's a big deal to graduate, and so you always get a lay on your graduation. Have a stand over there. Have a stand over there. Look at you all lined up. It's like I told you what to do. <laughs> Congratulations. Awesome, and you made it. <laughs> um, and uh, we have a committee of quilters that, um, that really spend so much time and energy and this is their ministry to these youth that they spend the whole year working on quilts for them. And um, we want to take a minute to thank our quilters as they're coming up. So I'll read their names. Um, we've got Jan Curtis, Joan Ferguson, Amrit Butler, and Autumn B, who have been serving on this committee for a very long time, and we're so thankful for them. And Marjorie Kazrovi, Marie McElravey, Sharon Tobias, and Mary Craven. So let's give them a hand as they come up. spend um, so much time and energy on these quilts. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I just wanted to read a quick, I have a book that's a gift for you. We'll have all the quilters come over here. Wonderful. And I just wanted to read a little poem to you. Let's see you all. My highest hope and my biggest dream for you is that you live into the fullness of who God called and created you to be. I pray that you are all of who you are is not just tolerated, but celebrated. I pray that you know your value doesn't decrease based on someone else's opinion, and that you know the truth so deeply within yourself that it vibrates in every cell of your being until you rise above any obstacle or challenge you face. You are enough. You are good, and you are worthy of love. You are whole just as you are in this very moment. Nothing anyone says or does, even yourself, can change that. You are filled with infinite abundance of grace, resilience, brilliance, because of who your creator created you to be. And if you ever forget that, may this community remind you that you are loved and that you'll always be connected to this community. All right. So, we've got Maddie first. Maddie. <laughs> and we've got Caroline next. Izzy. 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 Yeah. 
and Julian. <laughs> we always give Autumn one of the tall ones. <laughs> Make sure Autumn gets ties too. <laughs> and then Anna. <laughs> and Grant. <laughs> and Rebecca. and then Ty. We hope that these quilts remind you that you're always <laughs> that you're always surrounded in love and grace by this community. And then we're going to have a prayer, but in the second, the high schoolers are going to move down the aisle, and then if you'll all come in and surround them as we sing, that would be great. But there's one more quilt because we have another graduate. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we know how important uh, graduation day is. Thank you. So just like this will remind you of your home in Hawaii, we <laughs> hope that this will also remind you that grace is real. Okay. Thank you. We can start with congratulations. <laughs> as well. This is a year-long project and uh, the results are, are beautiful. Thank you so much for your love poured into this. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love as you showered upon us and on these graduates. We ask that you would go with them as they take new paths to new places, with new people, with new communities that they might reflect that love that you have received to all those they encounter in this world. Walk with them. May your peace and presence be with them. Amen. So if this is new for you, you'll be getting up, moving towards the center. We're putting hands on shoulders.
blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.